You know, I reacted because um, it was the first time. The initial reaction, someone pushes you. Conversation, you know, very real conversation. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a real conversation, you've got to sit back, mm -hmm. assimilate. So I think at that point in time, it was grace, really. And Would you say you took it all in after you read the email and, and, and deleted it? Yes. Um, I read, like I said last time, I read the email twice. Mm -hmm. And I deleted it because... Mm -hmm. For me, I'd gotten the information. I think there's no point holding on to something mm -hmm. that you know wasn't going to be healthy. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, ironically, it was something that was actually going to build us and build me. So I, I just you know felt deep down and said, "Look, I'm not perfect either. I've got my faults mm -hmm. and things." So, and like you know, in the Bible, when Christ says, "He who's without sin, let him cast the first stone." Um, if I'm going to be bashing her, arguing, and you know, pointing fingers. I'm not helping myself. Yeah, because fingers are you know, pointing right Then again, you. if whoever gets to buy the book and read the book, you know, people go through experiences in life and you never know where your experiences are going to take you. Mm -hmm. And God allows certain things to happen to you yeah. for reasons beyond our understanding. Mm. You know, even Moses stayed in the house of Pharaoh for years. For a purpose. For a purpose. And, you know, he didn't know at the end of the day what he would do. So mm. I think... You know, in that sense, the redeeming love is something that's innate. It's in us. We just don't know. But you need to look something, you know, something real will bring it out when you when you realize that. You know, there's no point fighting or hating. Mm. You know, God can love me so much to send His Son to come and die for me. Who am I, you know, not to forgive? Because even in our Lord's Prayer, it says, "Forgive us our sins, mm. as we forgive those who sin against us." So that is okay. where the redemption starts from. Now, society makes us believe that women don't cheat, and yeah. it's only men who do, uh, but this is not the case. More women are cheating now, especially in the work environment. Tell us about it. <clears throat> so, um, so, you know, when I, since I announced the book, even before I, I launched the book, and since I have launched the book, a lot of women have reached out to me. Um, some are falling into you know have fallen into temptation mm. some are currently in temptation mm -hmm. some you know they're married some you know in relationships and and so it's a lot it's it's happening it's it's very rampant um it's just that because it's not there's no nobody actually i, I probably think i'm the first person ever Come on. Even in the world <laughs> to talk about it yeah. because it's never mm. you know you talk about people talk about rape they talk about abuse talk about different things mm. but adultery from a woman's perspective has never been spoken usually about. Usually from us men. Exactly. It's so now usual. once I was able to come out to talk about it, I think a lot of people felt free. They felt oh wow and then obviously because they people know how much I love God so they're like you mean you you so that you means too. I'm not yeah. so. And I think that's also what the devil does, the trick of the devil. He tries to isolate you, so you and think it, you. and yeah. box you in, and then you end up being isolated and you fall. But once you, sh once, you sh once there's light, I mean, there's a verse in the Bible that's, that says, walk in light, and I, I can't remember, but once there's light, you know, then darkness will flee. So basically, a lot of women have reached out from even like from the church to um, just regular people. So it's, it's kind of rampant. I, I want to dwell on this issue of sex because of how important it is. Yet it's been um, it's been it's it's treated the way it is treated now. Again, in the book, you said when you have sex with someone, you enter into a covenant with that person. When you sleep with someone other than your spouse, there's a spiritual consequence. I had a couple in here um, last year. A similar story to yours and what he says was uh, what the, 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 the husband said was um, I don't remember the name now but it's it's uh, when a man you know um, releases into a woman it stays there for ages so much so that even if she ends up marrying someone or when she ends up marrying someone elements of Trip. previous you know mm -hmm. whatever you know um, still there and um, as part of the child or what so this is how deep it there's a name for it i can't remember now mm -hmm. this is how deep it is and you have it written here in a different way mm -hmm. 
share with us? I think it's <clears throat> sex is, is deep. It's a covenant. Mm. Um, and so if you look at um, traditionally, if you're doing, if you're engaging in any covenant in any way, you, there's, so let me give an example, even in traditional means, things that we watch on TV and stuff, mm. the blood has to be shed. Yeah. Or not even, I mean, even in, in the States, you know, you find that, okay, when the Americans, when the British went to America, the Native Indians, they, 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 there was a lot of blood covenants, yeah, you know, yeah. when the, yeah. the white people came to Africa, slave trade, you know, for something to, for a deal to be sealed, then you have to shed blood. Yeah. And it's the same way with sex. So mm -hmm. marriage is like, um, sex is actually the thing that validates the covenant of marriage. So ideally it is blood that is, is life. Mm -hmm. So once, once a man and a woman have sex, the man is giving her a part of him, him his seed. Mm -hmm. It's life, it's blood. And then she, so when he gives her his seed, her, well ideally the way it's supposed to be is her hymen then breaks yeah. and then there's blood yeah. so there is a covenant mm. so it's a spiritual thing we actually do not understand it's beyond physical yes we don't actually understand and so with multiple partners you find that you just have seeds of different people yeah. in you and so when you start manifesting and doing certain things you know or even covenant so if there's a I mean I don't want to go too deep into like generational curses and things but you know, those, those are the ways those things pass through. So, and if you look at it, and that's why they say sometimes, oh, a couple, a married couple, they begin to look alike. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, yeah, yeah, your husband, you mm -hmm. look alike, you know. It's all because <coughs> a part of him yeah. is in you. So, sex is so powerful. Mm -hmm. it, it is, it is powerful. It's, it's something, it's a gift. Shouldn't also to us from yeah. God yeah. it's a gift it's for pleasure it's for reproduction mm. you know it's I believe when a man and a woman are, ha are having sex God is happy because they, <coughs> they're doing something that they are as husband and wife yeah. they're doing something that he created them to do but when you then go into multiple partners then yeah you're, you're, you're doing what you're not supposed to do so we're taking pieces from the book the richer woman <coughs> Excuse me, Omi Lola Oshikwai alongside her husband, Benga, in the house. And um, just learning her life story and how it applies to us, everyday living and all of that. And um, like I did say, feel free to call. Can we pick that call? I see the phone ring in there. Ring a ding a ding. Hello? Okay, I think we lost it there. Uh, but feel free to call if you want to share your thoughts or you want to. Uh, there we go. Hello? <laughs> all right let me finish the statement even before <coughs> all right hello hi how are you good evening what's your name hey Kemi how are you doing tonight great so you want to share your thoughts you want to ask a question phone number right I can give her my email address okay, feel free yes so you can email me at omilola at omilola.com so that's o-m-i-l-o-l-a at o-m-i-l-o-l-a dot com did you give her one more time omilola at omilola.com omilola is o-m-i-l-o-l-a so that's omilola at omilola dot com Who's next on line? Hello? Hi, how are you? Good. What's your name? All right, thanks for calling. What's your angle? Okay.
think I think okay. I think we get where you're at, where you're going. Hmm. Um, what I was going to say is, I understand where the callers, the point of views are coming from, and we're human, and God has given us the gift, the ability to think, mm. to rationalize, but we cannot rationalize beyond what the Creator has allowed us to do. Mm. However, if you go into the Word, you see, the beauty about God is, God doesn't force you, mm. He actually gives you free will. Which is why we're talking about redeeming love. Mm. Redeeming love is the basis of God's gift of Christ mm. to bring us back to Him. Right? Now, they're talking about sex with either in marriage or with multiple people. Um, in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, it talks about um, verse 4. Mm. It talks about when Christ was talking to the Pharisees and he told them that have you not read that in the beginning he created them male and female mm. so God's intentions were clear from the beginning sex is for procreation and is for marriage it's for husband and wife the pleasures are there for husband and wife right it's not recreational mm. if it was the Bible would have told you so yes we know I think is it David, or who is it that had so many wives and concubines? Oh, yes. Creation going there. What he did was not in accordance <coughs> with what God wrote. But because of his heart, and because of what would come out of what he did. Mm. Because in his lifetime, when he was young, he wrote certain things. When he was in the Middle Ages, he wrote certain When he was older, he ended up talking about everything being vanity. And now God allowed him to go through that process in order for him to write those words in the Bible so that we can understand that at the end of the day a lot of what we do by our own understanding and our own conception is going to end up being vanity mm. because even in that Matthew chapter 19 when it talked about divorce Christ told them that from the beginning it wasn't so but all this God would allow if it would bring you back to him mm. if you if you want to kill a thousand or billion people yeah. God would still allow it in the sense that you chose to do it but if you now choose to redeem your life with him, he would accept you. Okay. You have another one? Um, yeah, I just wanted to add that, you know, this week I've had to go for two way keepings. And when you die, your body is left behind, but your spirit goes. So every it's a spiritual thing. Secondly, not all animals. The eagle is one of the most magnificent birds. Yeah. And an eagle actually chooses one life's partner, and that life partner stay, helps the eagle raise mm -hmm. her um, eaglets, and she stays with the, that one life partner for life. So, you uh, okay, so uh, it basically is um, facing your fears and fulfilling your dreams or your purpose. So what I find out is that a lot of people do not fulfill their dreams or their purpose because of fear. Mm -hmm. They allow fear to paralyze them, but that's not a good thing. So fear is actually not bad. Fear is a good thing. You know, it's an emotion that's supposed to help you to prevent you from danger, so you won't, you know, put your hand in fire, you won't get burnt. You know, but when you now let fear stop you from fulfilling your dreams, that's not the way we were wired. But unfortunately, a lot of people, because of fear, but what they need to realize is, uh, or they wait for fear to go mm. before they fulfill their dreams. But mm. they, what they re need to realize is that fear is part of the process of success. And most successful people feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Most successful public speakers still feel <laughs> fear when they get on that podium or that platform to speak. I'll tell you this, I'm on, I'm on TV regularly. And I had my first five, ten seconds on TV, once the camera is on, there's this to a bit of um, Silver Sestano earlier on, and he talked about fear being the fuel for him to succeed, for mm. his success right now. Mm -hmm. He was fueled by fear. Mm -hmm. 
I've lived it because mm -hmm. let me give you an example this book <laughs> I was afraid mm -hmm. to put it out mm -hmm. you know I mean the day that I was writing it my hands were shaking mm -hmm. I, I think my husband was more excited <laughs> to release it than <laughs> me but you know what I didn't let fear paralyze me I knew I, I needed to do it and I, and I put it out there and now like I keep saying people all over the world are being touched by the book you know their lives are being changed as far as Australia but if I let fear paralyze me then I wouldn't have fulfilled my purpose. So, in fact, when you feel fear, the greater the fear, I think it actually means that you're onto something big. Wow. You're onto something that would that is probably going to be. So fear is good then. It's good. Just perspective of fear. Yes. Let's pick this call and hear what who has to say. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Pardon. All right, thanks for calling. Um, let's hear your angle and make it short, sharp, and sweet. Okay, we'll check it out. What's the word? Let, let's hear it right now. There we go. That's it. That, oh, my goodness. If I had a dollar, I'll let you have it. But I have, I have some niners in my pocket right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Let's, let's take on this angle. <clears throat> now, this part of the book says, this is when you went. This is just some crazy parts. This is another crazy part. In January, I went through a series of attacks which were targeted at your children back to back. Your oldest daughter was diagnosed with a knee condition that required her to wear a cast for two weeks. She broke down or broke her toe um, on the same day. On the same day, she broke her toe. Um, and you were going to put when you were going to put a cast on the knee, um, the day you were meant to remove the cast, you got a call that you should rush home because a heavy metal pole had fallen on your second daughter's head, the same one who needed surgery, and then um, she had to get stitched. Your son now fell and hit his head twice. Um, your nanny had a really um, random bad allergic reaction to uh, from an insect bite and. Uh, some days later she couldn't move all kinds of things happening right up here it goes on to say in the process of writing your book your second daughter you had to fly your second daughter abroad you know for treatment and all crazy things were happening did you think it was something you didn't do or something you did or what, what was going on through you guys this time um <clears throat> so what happened was I had decided that I, you know, when, when, when I, when, so the idea came to write a book and I thought, you know, I'm Africa's premier wealth coach, I'll write a book on finance, I'll write a book on Do It Afraid. And when I started writing on Do It Afraid, I felt God saying, no, you're going to share some of the things that you did go through mm -hmm. in marriage. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, made me afraid. So I left the book. Then one day I went to Google to speak to women in tech mm -hmm. on finance. I was invited to speak. And, you know, um, at the end, when I was, I just released the Do It Afraid journal and I was, people were signing, I was signing autographs for people and someone walked up to me and said, there's a book you're writing, God mm -hmm. says you should speed it up. I see Q1 2017, that book is going to save a lot of marriages, a lot of young women are suffering in silence with no real teachers. At that point, I freaked out because I said, how do you know I'm writing a book? And how do you know that I'm supposed to talk about things about my marriage? So anyway, I knew that was a call from God and then I decided to take out time. So the whole month of January, I declined all speaking engagements, went mm -hmm. off social media, and I wrote this book in one month. But in the process of writing this book, then the series of attacks came. At first I was afraid that was going on, but then I realized that it was because of how powerful this book is. Destruction. And, and I knew that it was distractions. So I found that sometimes I would go through something, but then as soon as that attack I actually will come out stronger and more motivated and say, you know what, I'm going to write this book. And I will book. sit down and I'll, I mean, there was one day I woke at 1 a.m. I wrote from 1 a.m. to 11 a.m. straight, you know. So it, what the devil thought, what he was trying to do was to scare me to stop. But instead, it was fooling me and giving me, you know, all this. So at the end of the day, I had to go to take my daughter to London for surgery. But after the surgery, in fact... It was when she, you know, two days after surgery, when we were alone in the house, God then said to me, you're launching this book in London. So I actually launched it in London. Great. Yeah. I wish we could go on, but uh, time is up right now. We need, we need 
What do we need to talk about this? We need about <laughs> ten <one>. hours. <laughs> we need ten hours. Tell us where to get this book. You can As get it everywhere. Up. Latana bookstores in VI, Nakinos in Ikoi. You can get it at Plectrum Hub on the mainland, Pataba Books in Suriliri, on Amazon um, in the US, um, France, all the European countries, the UK, Canada, um, on Kindle worldwide, Jumia all over Nigeria, Rene Q in Ghana. Kada Books. Uh, Okada books, ebooks, mm. Okada books all over Nigeria, yeah. in Abuja, um, Uyo Boulders Bookstore, Abuja, the Fusion Store. Follow me on social media, Umilola at Umilola, Umilola sorry, at Umilola Oshikoya. Mm -hmm. Oshikoya is with an H. So on my social media feed, especially on Instagram, I'm also on Twitter at Umilola, Facebook, Umilola Oshikoya. Okay. All the information is there on how to get the book. Thank you so much. Thank hopefully on iTunes shortly. ITunes, right? yeah. Hopefully yeah. shortly. We should yeah. get a movie from this book if you ask. Me. Um, you know, so many people books, have. Right? Some guys are actually working on this script. There we right go. <laughs> some Let's people see. have. I'll be. I'll be there. To tell me what, what will be movie. my role. Uh, what <laughs> kind of movie is? Um, tell you behind the scenes. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you I for having us. I need you to give us. a final word. Just one line. Give me a final word. Give somebody a final word. A boost and encouragement. Just one line. Um, for me, one line. One line. That's a tough one. Should I, I go first? So I think. Do it afraid and fulfill your purpose. There we go. <laughs> All right, come on now. Live your life. Live your life. And be in tune with your life, because mm. God's behind everything. Live your life in tune with your life. The good Lord is behind. Thank you so much for listening. For those who called, I really appreciate the calls. We couldn't pick some other calls for time and all of that. But um, thank you for being part of the show. This is Men's Room. I'm Onimisi Adaba. I'll bring, we'll, we'll, we'll bring them again sometime soon to just talk. I don't know when. You guys can come. Feel free to come any day, any time. Or call me up and say, hey, we got a story for you. And then we'll put you up in the Men's Room. Thank you so much. Thank I'm Onimisi Adaba. Good night and God bless you real good. Please click on the red subscribe button below this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.